I wanted to talk about the current state of my living room where I spend most of my time. It's current state, what I have planned for it, but it's kind of a unique situation too because although I adore this building in this neighborhood, I ain't gonna be here forever. This is a duplex that I bought two or three years ago. I've been doing a live-in renovation and once this is all done, I'm off to the next one. So everything that I'm buying for this needs to be able to plug into my next place. So I'm thinking long term. Let's show you. Giacomo, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come here. Okay, what the hell is in here? Let's start off with the bell of the ball, the Tobias Scarpa Bastiano. I searched high and low for this for months and I passed by the listing on this one, must have been for a few weeks. I hated it because the fabric shown in the photos was that 70s trash. Orange, brown, reddish, gross. I ended up pulling the trigger on it and when it showed up, to my surprise, the color was completely different. The red is more of a maroon, the yellow is actually gold, and it has this cool 3D nature to it. So I love it actually. It's not getting reupholstered until Giacomo destroys it. Next to me, we have the Vitsu 621 table, which might be a little too stark for this spot, but I just love this table so much that I just want it around me. So these tables are plastic, but perhaps the most luxurious take on plastic I've ever seen. They are surprisingly heavy and the finish is beautiful. The big selling point of these though is that they're just so versatile. I swear everyone who owns these constantly moves these around. There's something about their neutral design and utility that make this both fun and something that just always comes in clutch. The downside is once you get one or a pair, you just want more. Like you just can't sleep at night because you just want more. Under my feet, a rug, very interesting rug. I put this down just temporarily to warm the space in the winter time. I initially thought it was way too much in competing with the sofa, but I actually quite like it now. This room is for socializing, so I just want people to feel easy here. And you can't take me seriously with a rug like this in my living room. It's playful. Come on in, be easy, take a load off. Look at me, I have this weird rug. Perhaps the other bell of the ball, the bells of the balls. This is the Eames LCW, and this is my favorite chair of all time. Believe it or not, I got this by putting out an ad on Craigslist for an Eames LCW, and it worked. This thing blows people's minds for two reasons. One, it is surprisingly comfortable. It is so comfortable. And two, it's kind of an experience. You slide down into it. Every angle you look at this thing is striking. I think is just the most beautiful chair ever made. Coffee table. So this is a walnut crotch. This was gifted to me by my dear pal and renowned furniture maker, Matt Cassieja. I finished the top, he made the legs. This table has lived a number of lives, including a piece of art on my wall at my old apartment. I really adore this thing. I think it is so beautiful. So I'm a really big fan of furniture with a natural finish because if you mistreat it like I have, you got all these water rings, well, all you have to do to revive it is take four aught steel wool, and you give it the goods, the whole thing, and then you refeed it, and you have a basically brand new piece of furniture. It looks amazing. Big ass, heavy ass mirror. There used to be artwork here, but I replaced it with this, which totally opened up this space. Seems way bigger now, I love this thing. The guy who sold me this was liquidating his rug cleaning business so that he and his dogs could travel in a camper across the country. Pretty rad. I spoke with them for about two hours, left with this and a really rad rug for my master bedroom. Noguchi lamp, this is a 10A. So these are built with bamboo and then covered in I think what's called washi paper. I love these because they have a candlelight glow to them. They're so warm and inviting. And this room is an anti-overhead light room. We only do lamps here. If you bring an overhead light to my place, you get the hell out of here. There are no overhead lights in this room. You get the hell out. Okay, now we're venturing into 
the temporary part of this room. Nothing over here is staying. There needs to be a piece here so that it visually pushes everything forward. I want this to be an intimate space. This is an Ikea lounge chair. What is it, the Pong? Awesome chair, comfort wise. That said, it just doesn't fit visually in this space. It just doesn't feel special enough either. This is the Verrier variable. It's a kneeling chair. I bought this to replace a Herman Miller Aeron that I was using for work. This is not the proper replacement for an Aeron, but it is fun. <laughs> this is actually how I usually sit in it. It's very interesting. People love playing with this. What needs to happen here are two lounge chairs and these are not it. So I'm thinking maybe Vitsu 620 chairs, like the white shell, probably cinnamon leather. This is probably the grail for me right now. I'm really way down the Vitsu rabbit hole, which we'll talk about further in just a second. Next, maybe the Verrier Extreme. I did not like these at first, then they clicked for me. They're very sculptural, but maybe they're a bit too playful. And then finally, the Spanish chair, but these are eye-wateringly expensive. I love these though. I feel like this is what Hemingway would be rocking. And the patina they would gain over the years would be amazing. Another lamp. I picked this up from a vintage store that I go to every month. It was the shade that sold me. David Polivka. This is actually a pine bench. It's solid pine. I used it for everything from a bench to night sands to now flanking the credenza. LG TV, Sonos speakers, I already did a video on those. Their credenza I picked up from a design build company in town. Um, they're moving offices and they're letting go of over 30 of these. These are insanely heavy, really nice. This is not a forever piece though. What I really want is Vitsu shelving and I've gone through the process. Let me show you. Okay, so Vitsu's process is pretty neat and it's free by the way. You send dimensions and photos to the designer. You give some guidance on how you plan to use the room and they'll configure the shelving setup for you, send you renderings and a breakdown of pieces and the pricing. Unfortunately, the one thing they forget to send is a ton of boxes of Kleenex to clean up all the tears you'll be shedding after you see the prices. It's not cheap. My setup was particularly expensive because my walls are plaster and plaster walls need floor brace system to support the load, unlike a drywall setup. Let's look. So here's this one, cool. Here's this one, oh my God, what? And oh my, oh my God, what is, oh my God, what? I still want it. I still want it. It's just gonna have to wait a little bit, okay? And you're gonna have to wait a little bit. One cool thing to note though is, say you pack up and leave, like I'm going to do, and you move into a new home with your Vitsu system, they will reconfigure your current Vitsu system to work in your new home. So you wanna change things up a bit. It is totally modular, and it's supposed to move with you throughout your life really rad, so. I'll be back, Fitzu. I'll be back. Okay, guys, that's all on this one. Thank you so much for watching. You know, we appreciate it. And we will see you on the next one. Bye.